Welcome to the Legged Podcast. As you all know by now, the Legged Podcast is powered by Monterex. Make sure you head over to monterex.com and take advantage of the 15% off they offer if you type in Legged at checkout. Monterex have been the main sponsor of the podcast for a while now and their gear is a belter. So head over to the website now and take full advantage of the Legged promo code. So before this episode starts, if you do enjoy the Legged Podcast and you do want to support us for just a pound a week, you can on Patreon. And with doing so, you get early access to all our episodes and an extra weekly episode of me and Jordan just chewing the fat. Thanks for the support. Nice one. All right, welcome to the Legged Podcast. It's me, Jordan Neal. It's me, Andy Grant. And this week's guest is Dale Jennings. Nice one for having me on. I appreciate it. Nice one for being here. Before we start, big shout out to our sponsors, Monterex again. Uh, 15% off if you type in Legged at checkout. 20% off their clothing if you type in Legged 20 at checkout. And also 10% off Health Kick Kitchen, who will sort you with your scrans for the week. So all the links are in the description. Gonna be good. This we've uh, I said to you outside before we coming in. People have sort of asked here to come on. Yeah, yeah. So Paddy was obviously talking about talking you up basically about how good he was as a kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a uh, no. Paddy's good, good lad. To be fair, I played with him for a few years. Still play, playing against him now for the Dovey and that. So uh, it's good. Yeah, good player. It's great. So usually, um, obviously, to go right back, you from you grew up in Heighton or Kenny, was it? Yeah, I was born in Heighton and moved to Kenny when I was about eight. Um, not a wool like I thought you was. No, <laughs> yeah. not, even though I don't live in Liverpool now, like so, we live in Warrington. So, what, like my kids, kids are speaking about like, what was like, <laughs> like my name, my name, and like, oh, it's mad this. But since I've come back, to be fair, like come back from Munich, I haven't lived in Liverpool for the past eight or nine years. So, uh, yeah, just prefer living out mm. of the city. It's a crazy journey you've had. Like, obviously, can't wait to get into it. But going back to a kid in Kenny, was you just like a you know happy, fussy, loving kid? Yeah, since I can remember, I had a ball at my feet, um, probably from the age of five or six. Like, I was quite a late starter. You see kids now coming with me, who are like three, do you know what I mean? And I like, kind, of, kind of bring the kids in, I'm like a little bit young, do you know what I mean? I like to start from six or seven myself, so you can you can coach them properly. Um, but yeah, since I can remember, I had the ball at my feet, like... Just like street footy? Yeah, I was just out, you know what, to be fair, like when I was younger, I didn't have many mates, I was just on my own with my ball, so you, I'd soon as I'd get home from school, I'd be out playing footy. Um, and then got onto a team when I was about seven. We made that team, and ever since then, like n- non-stop playing. I always need to ask because we've had a few on, like Adam Morgan, Pad- Paddy Lacey. You know, were you one of those annoying kids who was just amazing at <laughs> every sport? Yeah, I was good at everything. Yeah, <laughs> especially uh, footy. Um, what else did I play? I tried golf. I'm shy at golf. Right? <laughs> I always fucking had it. Yeah, shy at golf. Um, just getting all lessons and all that, but um, no, I'm shy at golf. That's that's one thing I struggle playing. But uh, yeah, footy I was just. Not, you know, some kids have got it naturally, do you know what I mean? And some kids are there, like, they've, they've got to work for it and that. So I was one of them lucky kids that sort of naturally had it, just naturally had the gift. And, sorry, and school wise, then are you kind of, you're academic or you just can't be asked at school? Just <laughs> no, no, fuzzy. I'm tick as anything, mate. Can't, can't do no. And I left, I left school in year, year nine, I was in Broad Green, and went, went in full time in Liverpool when I was in year nine, yet. So. I've I've never been like the sharpest tool in the box. So lucky like for me, like footy was my life. I knew if I if I weren't playing footy, I was fucked doing anything. Yeah, nah, footy, that's, you know I mean? that, that's mm. not normal, that is if to become No, I think I think when I was in school I was I was a shit, do you know what I mean? I was I mean I like to swear, yeah. Yeah, me, um, go for it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was I was thinking, I think at the time, like Liverpool had said, like we'll take him in. We'll uh, mm. you can you can you can work with us. So I I'd I go in there and, and work every day with Liverpool. For a few hours a day, and uh, yeah, I think that that struggle. But even in school, anyway, I just didn't want to learn. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it was just a bit of a mad one like that. But I don't think many many people do, do they? Mm. <laughs> no, it, it's it's hard, no, especially it, when you're coming from, you know, the places in Liverpool, like sort of inner city. It's hard, and it it it, it becomes like only a couple of kids really want to be at school, don't yeah. they? But I guess you're one of the lucky ones. You had something that could can get you out of it, basically. Yeah, yeah. But like, I had no intention. Like my life was footy, so I was just like, I'm gonna be a footy player. And I knew that's what I was going to do, so I was just like, that's me, do you know what I mean? Focused on that, nothing else. I think now they should really, because we were speaking about it before we started, and like kids are getting to like 15, 16, play footy all their life, and then they're just getting told you haven't got a pro or you haven't, you haven't done this, you know what I mean? And people don't know what to do with themselves then mm. after footy. Trent's um, just done a video on that, didn't he? I seen something about that the other day, yeah. I think like the more, sorry, more help needs um, going into there. Um, lads who, who've played all their life and then he just get told no 
Mm. It's so you're not going nowhere, and it's just like the, the, the mm. sat there. Like, what am I gonna do? It's so dangerous, isn't it? Because like when you get put into that world, we've had this conversation with other people, haven't we? When you get put in that world and then you get taken out of it, there's only a very few options left for you. You either go and do a manual job where, like, you know, you might know somebody who's got a building firm or a roofing firm or whatever, and that's great if you can get employment. But once you fall out, it's it's hard to get back into any sort of structure in terms of education or. You know, some of your mates might have been working in an office for like four years and have moved up and now earning a few quid or whatever. Mm. And you all seem to go back to the start, don't you? I mean, yeah, yeah. It's such a dangerous position for kids to be put in. Like, yeah. No, sorry, I, I was going to say as well as that, like, I just think, I was go back to it, like, ego, it must be hard as well from being told from the age of, like, year nine, you're going to be this. And then, oh, sorry, even younger, maybe, like, ages eight or nine. Yeah. But then getting to, like, say, 16, 17, and you're like, oh, you're not that no more. That's your identity for the last 10 or 12 years, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because you, you, even when like, you're a kid and you're playing with like academy football or playing for Liverpool or Everton, and you get told, no, do you know what I mean? You've got to, as you said, go and look for a job. Or I've done it, I, I was playing for however long, and then I was thinking, this, is go- this money's going to last me forever, and then it's not. You get injured or personal stuff happening in your life, and you've got to sit there and you're thinking, oh, I've got four, three or four kids here, do you know what I mean? And I need to go and find work, and you're like, well, what can I do? Because I don't know what to do. Mm. So you're looking for all jobs, like warehouse jobs, and, and you're sitting there thinking, you know, I was playing fucking professional football two or three years ago, and now I'm sitting here working in a factory or whatever. And it's mm. tough mentally, that's tough as well, I think. I think that's what people don't mm. understand, and that's why I fucking hate the shout of, oh, he's on an underground a week, he should be able to deal with it. it like, I hate that. Yeah. And I think that's all right saying that, but it doesn't take away <laughs> feelings of, like, you know, insecurity or, you know, your mental health deteriorating because, you know, you're not quite the person you thought you would be. Like, just mm. because no matter how much money you earn, like, I'm sure you earned a good few quid, at, you know, throughout your career, but no matter how much money you're in, it doesn't take away thoughts and negative thoughts when you're on your own. No, no, think- definitely not. I think I, I said this to, to, to my bed the other week. I said, I've, f- I've felt happier, like, now in my life than when he had whatever I wanted, do you know what I mean? Like, these times where you might go, I know, we, 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 you know, you struggle doing that or, or whatever, working. Um, but, like, when I had it all, like, there was times where I was sitting there thinking, I'm not happy with my life, do you know what I mean? Just because i got money in the bank or, or I'm doing this or I'm play, playing in front of, you know, 20,000 fans, we him, we out. It's just, that doesn't, not people. Not evidence I would see him, do you know what yeah. I mean? And people think, oh, he's got this life and he's, he's living it. But loads of footy players struggle with that as well. I'm sure people, are not not just in football, but mm. yeah, that's tough. What age was you um, sort of taken <coughs> by Liverpool then in terms of like, what age did they pick you up? Uh, I, was, I was eight, I signed, I signed uh, when I was eight for Liverpool. Um, yeah, that's fucking mad, that It's so early, isn't it? I, did, I was playing and the, the scout at the time it was coming to watch another kid on the, on the, the other team and he seen me and I said, the fella was like, no, that's him. He was like, no, it's him there. And pointed at me. Arthur Edwards, his name is, he p- passed away about a year or two ago. Yeah, yeah, fella. Honestly, one of the nicest fellas you'd ever meet. And he took me in and looked after me, to be fair, like picking me up and taking me to training because we, co- we couldn't get there. My mum didn't drive on. on. Um, so when, when Liverpool wanted to sign me, <coughs> And um, we said, like, we, we can't get there. And he was like, no, we, well, I'll, I'll come and pick him up and take him three times a week. Uh, and that's what he'd done, to be fair, so. Stuff like that's priceless, isn't it? Yeah. You say he's obviously passed away now, but, like, for people, because he's not getting paid, you know, like, a, a mad amount of money to, to, to invest his time in, you know, into young kids. Mm. To, like, them sort of selfless people, I think, sometimes get forgotten about, don't they, in the, in the grand scheme of things, like. Yeah, but I think it was like that with a couple of people. Um, to be fair, I see, like, obviously when he passed away, the amount of people on Twitter, like, was saying, like, what a fella he was and how much he'd done for Liverpool and, and the kids from the city and everything. Like, that's that's just because he wants to do it, do you know what I mean? He's probably not getting paid no more than, to you know, to come mm. and pick me up or, or mm. do what he's done. He's just done that out of goodness of his heart. So I think people like that. I think we need more people like that now because I think kids struggle. I think like when I was younger, like we never had much growing up, and like I was at like academy football, and you see all the parents coming in, you think, oh, these are all fucking, these are all minted, do you know what I mean? I'm some little, some little whatever off Kenny, do you know what I mean? <laughs> just, just turning up, felt like I, I weren't good enough to be there type thing, and you've got people like that, that believing you, uh, and you know, mm-hmm. what want, want you to do good and mm-hmm. that. So, is that hard that going from, you know, as you say, going from Kenny and you know just kicking about with your ball and playing with you like you you made that Sunday league team to then going into like the fucking the goal fucking archers basically of Liverpool and it all being really professional and as you say people pulling up and guessing in like makes and stuff yeah yeah um, yeah no at the time I weren't really, I weren't 
I was just a kid wanting to play footy, but then yeah. as you get older, a little bit older, you start to see it and all that, and you see the types of kids, and it's, it's all the same types of kids coming in. So I don't know whether they've got a profile, and I was speaking to one of the kids' dads the other day, and he was saying the same thing. He said, I feel like it's... I don't know whether it's true or not, because I'm not in and around academy football at the minute, but he said it seems to be like kids who've got money that are always getting in and that, but I don't know whether that's true or not, but I think people could see... And I could see that when I was younger myself, um, not many, you know, not many kids like me were getting opportunities. Mm. Do you think that's because now people are putting so much in? I mean, we're going to, but even now you're, you're coaching. Yeah. Do you think people, because people are paying the kids now to get private coach, do you think yeah. it's maybe why them are kind of getting in, do you think? Or? Uh, possibly, yeah. I think, I think the, the, the investments parents are putting into the kids now is mega compared to like when yeah. I was back playing. Like we, had, we had never had none of this private coaching and a lot of ex-pros are going into it now. So... The generation of kids coming through now are probably going to be better than what we was mm. growing up. I think um, getting that extra training because we never had it, and it's all, especially with like one to one coaching, you can stop it and go into detail with the kids. You know what I mean? I see kids coming in with me who were struggling and they're flying now. Like a few months later, you can just little bits of information, detailed information you can give them that we didn't really get mm. when we were younger. I know like you're playing academy footy, but you don't really get that type of coaching. It was yeah, more as, a, one, as yeah. a group and. Stuff like you know, that. even though when you're you're kind of getting picked up around that time, what, did you know when you're like Sunday league team that you were just well better than everyone else? Was it ever like you know? Yeah, you knew because you know when you were playing, you'd fly past six or seven players and, and, and go and score, and you'd be scoring five or six a game. You know what I mean? So you, you knew you were better. Um, I was one of them as well. Like I, as I said, I was a little shit when I was a kid. Like I wanted to take the throw-ins, the corners, the goal kicks, <laughs> pens, free kicks, everything. I just wanted to be one of them. And I would look at it now and I think. And I see kids, kids the same, and I try and get that out of the kids to be like a bit more of a team player. And that, and you see kids that can run past players, and I'm like, get other kids involved in that. But I was the same when I was that age, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, I knew, I knew like I was. And was there then a step up then when you did join Liverpool? Was there like a, oh, actually, I'm I'm not as good as I think, or did it did it make you feel even better because you were still as good? Yeah, no, I, I still felt like it was a step up, but I didn't feel out of place, you know what I mean? I was, I always felt like I was. The, the, you know, one of the best players. I, I shouldn't have been there. I should have got released years before I got released there. Uh, and he just kept me on. The likes of um, Dave Shannon, Steve Iway, like they, they put the necks on the line to keep me at the club because I should have been well gone before oh, that. Why did you say that? Just my attitude, the way I was. You know, I was fighting outside, of, outside of in school, getting kicked out of school. Like, that. You, you like that when you're a kid, you just get released as well, do you know what I mean? So they, I think that was one of the, the main reasons they took me out and put me in full time. Um, so no, like they believed in me and had big futures for me at the club. Like I, uh, Dave Shannon one time took, took me and my mum to meet Gerard and Carragher and Carragher's bar when I was young, do you know what I mean? I had a meal with them, like so I knew, like they was, my mum was saying like, you know, these these have got big plans for you here and you need to sort your head out basically and I was just like yeah whatever but sitting back now at the time like that's massive like to get sucked there and be sat with them do you know what I mean no, having a conversation conversa- 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 yeah. <laughs> but at the time I didn't realise how big it was till now I'm mm. sitting here thinking no one else gets that done for them do you know what I mean do you, do you remember much about it? not really no that's a mad that's a, cool that's a mad scrap <laughs> I remember Cadigan brought me like a top like in a box signed by all the players and all that I was just talking to me and, and and whatever I think and then he was going into coaching or Gerard it was at the time and he was doing a few of our sessions and it was just a bit bit surreal to be honest you know what I mean being that young I think I must have been about 13, 14 at the time when I sat there and met them uh, it's, it's crazy it feels like oh. you, it feels like you work like I don't know that you were sort of in not two different worlds that's a bit extreme but you're like you're just this kid you know happy and Kenny but then you you gone into this like already professional environment and you're just expected to go like come on you're in Liverpool now behave yourself mm. you know when you go home make sure you're going like you, you're not getting in fights you're not being who you were at that point yeah, yeah. that's hard isn't it to just be a, have expectation yeah. at that because age because especially everyone every, the, the footballer you are it's all down to everything you know that you've been in your life and yeah, now yeah. suddenly saying keep on being this footballer but, but don't act like yeah. that yeah. change everything else you just can't turn it off when you walk through the doors like yeah. that's you like I was, I was a raw kid like you don't see many players now that just just play off the cuff and do what they want to do, do you know what I mean? I just used to go and do what I wanted to do when I was playing, express mm-hmm. myself. I think kids now are more structured, um, especially the pressure on them now. I see like some of the parents, like even when I'm coaching them, and they're there, like, I'm, you're, you're paying me to, to coach your kids and you're in the kids' ear and, you know, the kids will do something, 
you know, and you can see them like that, like looking, thinking, and then you can hear dads and like that going, come here, get on the ball, and you're like, now what are you sending me here for if you're not going to let me coach your kids, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And it's not, it, it's the very few, but I go and watch me players as well, so I, do, I, you know, if I've got like a spare hour on a Sunday before I play, because I play for, for my mate's team on a Sunday, I go and watch some of the kids, you know what I mean? And I can see it, I can just see how bad it is, and it's, it's ten times worse than when we were kids, like the mm-hmm. parents getting involved, screaming at kids. Kids probably petrified to do anything. Yeah, it's mad. That's my obviously we, we, this is a little tangent to go off on, but my my little lad's four now, and he's starting to like. I kind of tried to keep the ball away from him, but yeah. he's found it and he's starting to love it. But that's my biggest fear, you know, in terms of Sunday league footy, whether he's good or not. Like, yeah. I, I don't really care to be totally honest, but like, like you know, the the shouting and the like, the, like shouting at the refs and stuff. But yeah. I remember as a kid, it felt normal to hear mm-hmm. it. But like, I do worry about that these days in terms yeah, of yeah. because it's become as competitive as any football, isn't it? Like kids Sunday league now, people take a real pride in mm-hmm. you know winning leagues, winning cups, and. You know, people to get emotionally involved, don't they? Yeah, yeah, it is, especially for the parents. But as you said, my little lad's four as well, and she's saying to me, take him in, I just said he's not ready, he's four. Mm. When he wants to come in and, and play, I'll give him another year or two to, to, to thingy, but even four is too young. Yeah. And then kids are getting, you know, shouted at because they're not doing something right. And for me, it's, it's just going to kill the confidence before they started. I thought I started too young because I got to my time at Liverpool where I just, I didn't want to be there. I think that's, that's why I was like, I've been doing this now for seven or eight years, religiously. Like, and I was like getting bored of it, and I was like, fell out of love with it. So I think that's that's my worry if I get my little lad in, involved too too early. Mm-hmm. But some kids will be different. That was just me because I wanted to be out doing doing other things than just you know just playing footy. Um, Did you ever get any pressure from like your mum? Maybe like, is that, I can imagine one of those pressures our parents thinking that their kids gonna be like you know the breadwinner, gonna be the mm-hmm. multi-millionaire. Did you yeah. get ever pressure off? Friends and family as you go yeah, through the academy. Definitely, like you get, you know, you're gonna buy me an house when you're older and all that. So you're sitting there thinking, I've got to do this. You know what I mean? Especially when you, you know, the situation get your family in. and as I said, we we grew up, we never had, we never had a pot of piss in growing up. Um, so I wanted a better life for, for my family. Do you know what I mean? So I felt that extra pressure to do well. Um, definitely, yeah. It's hard that in mm, it. I know it's, it's different now. Obviously, you can talk about it now as a you know as a grown man with with your own family, but like. As a kid, you must have them thoughts, wasn't you? Like fucking, hell. like it's like you said there. I've got to do this. Like there's no option of me here mm-hmm. saying, you know, not, not just your mum, but listen, listen, I don't want to play footy anymore because people well, are like you saying there. Like you, you, you kind you're, of you're you've the done way it for out. seven eight years. You can't really be asked. You can't say to everyone who's believed in you, have got these dreams on you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, by the way, can't be bothered doing it no more. Yeah, that's what I mean. You feel like you don't want to let people down, especially when people have put their neck on the line for you. Like, like I said, Dave Shannon and Steve Iway was was. You know, pushing for me to stay at the club when I know other coaches didn't want me there. Um, so you, you feel like you've got to, you know, them something to, to do something. And then when I left there, I was like, yeah, whatever. And then about two or three months later, I was like, oh, what have I done here? Do you know what I mean? I've, you know, fucked it up. Um, got nothing else to fall back on. I went to the college, like a sports college in Crocky, running around with all. And that, that just made me worse, to be honest. I was sitting there thinking, what am I doing here? Should be, should be playing, playing for Liverpool, and I'm not. Um, so I was out of footy for like a year then. I went to a few different clubs and nothing was happening because they obviously had my reputation and what I was like and they, they didn't want to have someone like me on the books. You know, before you did leave Liverpool, what were the type of players that you kind of coming through around that time? Um, Conor Cody was one of them. Um, Flannel. Um, when you look at like like Conor now, obviously, you know, got in the England set up and that now, did, was there a massive difference in like two questions in both like kind of actual playing football and off the field between like yourself and him could you could you kind of see a difference yeah he was he was more disciplined and was you know he was the captain for us growing every age year he was he was our captain um and he was a good player very good do you know what i mean and i'm not surprised to where he is now just how he was like playing as a kid um but i think it is discipline and like he wanted it he, he like i know we all say we want it but like, i mustn't have wanted it enough to to act the way I was acting, do you know what I mean? And I knew I wasn't, mm. wasn't um, sort of bringing myself, bring myself across in a good light, basically. I knew what, what I was doing weren't good enough, and I was still doing it, because I was like, I'm not bothered, I believe. Mm. And you get players like that who come and live and, and breed footy, mm. so. Connor's from Rainford, isn't he? So he, he's, he's a bit further out than yeah. Liverpool. But do you think that, that attitude of, 
I don't give a fuck. Like if you release me, you release me. I'll find. So do you think that's a? Li- do you think that's born in Liverpool? Like do you know what I mean? Because I, th- I find a lot of the people I've come across, I've done it myself in different walks of life and stuff. Where you, you almost have this chip on your shoulder. Like you just won't tell me that I'm not good enough. Like I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. eventually show you. Do you know what I mean? Where I find kids and people who are a bit further out. Sometimes it's more regimented. They're like, right, I know what I need to do. I know the way I need to speak. The way I need to act. Yeah. It's just, but when you're from like in a, an inner city. It is that chip on the shoulder, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think that's just people from Liverpool. I think even playing for Tsunami, you'd had lads there, like, going, oh, well, if I don't get a pro, I'm, I'm getting off. And just like, and then you go to the other clubs, like the likes of Barnsley, you get like first year pros and they're just giving everything to it. And if they're not playing or they're not getting looks in, they're just, they're still, you, you wouldn't hear a bad word coming out of them. Yeah. But like lads from this city, I've, I've done it myself, do you know what I mean? And that's just probably the way we are. We've got too much pride, I think. Mm. Yeah. It is that mm. thing because it's almost like you know it's the old school. They don't do it so much anymore. But like I remember, you know, like washing boots and stuff, or you know, go and get that for me. Whereas scouts kids would go get a. F- like, I'm not chasing that for yeah, you, yeah. but like other kids would be mm. okay. Yeah, no problem. They, I don't know what it is. It, it's just something in our water, isn't it? To yeah, say yeah. to say no. We've had uh, obviously Paddy on as well, and Paddy, I think, said he was the best player he's ever played against and that. Like, and obviously going through Liverpool, and I think he must have played with a. Uh, who did he say the year? It was the, the same sort of year group, but yeah, he, he was just yeah, sort of what he said. He, he said they'll get off the goalie and just go through everyone's score and then just yeah. walk away. That's what, as I said, I was just raw. I went, I'd, I'd get on the ball and just do what I wanted to do. Do you know what I mean? I had confidence in myself, believed in myself more than anything. I knew I was that good, basically, and that, that, that could come across as arrogant, but sometimes you've got to have that confidence to play. And that's what I was like when I was a kid, and I, I, knew, I knew that's what I was like. And I weren't going to change for no one. Um, but yeah, I played with Paddy for the, for a while. He's, he's a good player, and he's a good, good player, Paddy. Rana Ben, like, but he's, he's uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, some of, some of the comments we got on Paddy's uh, yeah. episode were great. Uh, so when you did, when you did kind of um, get released from Liverpool, and was there ever a bit of you that thought that was that in shock because you kind of knew how good you was? Did you think like fucking hell, cheeky bastards? Yeah, I didn't think it was going to happen. To be honest, I just thought that the, you know they're threatening me, they're saying it, but you know they're not going to let me go here yeah, because I felt like I was coming into it. Um, so I was shocked to be honest with any thoughts. I'll just go somewhere else. It's that simple, do you know what I mean? I believe in myself, I feel like I'm good enough to go anywhere. And I just didn't plan out that way. Do you remember the day when he said, right, that's that's it? Yeah. Um there was I can't remember his name. I think he was from Holland or somewhere, what's his name? Pete Amberg, I think his name was. Mm. He brought they took over the academy and uh, they loved me as well. And uh, he brought me in and, and he just said, look, we, we give you warning after warning, we're sending people to pick you up, you're not turning up to training. We can't keep doing it, these other kids here. So it's with the heavy art, basically, that we're going after the least And I was just like, yeah, all right, just sitting there, just like, sad. Have you got anything to say? I was just like, no. And just got off me, as I was walking out, my mum was going, look what you've done, look what you've done and all that. Do you know what I mean? And I was just like, yeah, whatever. How do you look back on that now as, like, um, as an adult and like, obviously mature? Shocking to be honest, my attitude stunk. I look back at some of the things that I used to do when I was a kid and I just cringe at myself. You know what I mean? Even like I see people now from years ago and you sort of want to try and avoid them because the way the way I was when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um just everything out of what my own lad to be, you know what I mean? And I think just because I got I got left to do what I wanted to do. Um my brother was my older brother sort of kept me in line and he went to jail when I, I think that's he went to jail and then I that was the year I left Liverpool, so as soon as he went away, mm. I was sort of like, no one's here to tell me what to do. My mum raised us on her own, didn't have like a father figure, do you know what I mean? So once he went there, I was like, no one's telling me what to do. Mm. And that's when it all just went off the rails then. Is that hard that obviously, like, obviously you don't have to go deep into it, but like obviously seeing someone who you guess you idolise or gives you structure, then go into prison, and yeah. then you sort of, as a kid, you're like, oh, what the fuck happens to me sort of thing? Yeah, because like, obviously, like looking up to someone like your older brother, everyone looks up to the older brothers, don't they? And um, I was just thinking, why, why me? Do you know what I mean? Like, why have I got this and he sort of got that type thing? Mm-hmm. So I sort of felt bad then and was like, well, I don't deserve that type thing. Bit of a mad thing, but that's just how I looked at it as a kid. Yeah. So a bit of a strange one, like. It is. It's guilt. It, yeah. You hear that quite a lot, don't you? Obviously, people who have, you know, close people who go to jail. It's that guilt of you know why did you end up in that situation and I'm. Mm. Sort of sitting at Liverpool with all this, the world at your feet, so yeah. to speak. That's, that's hard to deal with emotionally, though, as a kid. 
Yeah, definitely, because you, you've both got the same upbringing, do you know what I mean? So it's like, I've went one way and he sort of went another. Mm. And it's like, we've been brought up the same way, like, why am I here and he's there type thing. Yeah. So I sort of looked at it like that, but I think that's when I really started going off the rails, then when I sort of had no one there to, to pull me back and tell me what to do. Mm. You know what's mad already, though, when you've not even spoke about your pro career properly, but, like, if anyone hears the name Dale Jennings, I'm imagining, I don't know, they might be like, oh, he was meant to be belted in, but, like, oh, why isn't he playing now? Or well, people that have these things, but, yeah, they don't know, like, any of that straight away. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. I think, like, p- people don't understand what goes on in the background. And f- with, with, with footy, you've got, your head's got to be on it. You've got to be in it. You can't have, you know, things going on in the background. Because you just, you, you can't play, do you know what I mean? You've got to be focused on playing. And I've, I've just had so much stuff going on. Not only that, I've, you, you have injury, everyone does. I can't remember the last time I, I didn't play, well, I played feeling 100%. Um, but yeah, lo- loads that goes on in your head and you're just like, ah, oh, there's, mm-hmm. there's more to footy than, mm-hmm. yeah. than it's this. It's so hard as well because at that age, you know, 15, 16 or whatever, when you, you, your brain's not formed enough to, to like break down these emotions, is it? And like, you're not mature enough to go, no. right, and you to know, grasp what, the opportunity yeah, that you And to got. be like, yeah, I, you know, I've got a, you know, I know this has happened, but I've got to keep my head on because I need to get this and if I do this. I'll... At that age, you, you don't have that them thought patterns. You just have, you either have, okay, yes, I'll do it, or no, fuck it. Yeah. You don't have the middle ground of, mm. you know, understanding, do you? I think I was the same even when I went to Bayern. Like, I'd, you'd think I'd learn from, like, what had happened the year before or two years before, but I was still sitting there thinking not, not everything was going into it. Like, I wasn't putting everything into it. And I sit here thinking... What a dickhead, do you know what I mean? Like you had this opportunity that no one no one's ever gonna get from where I'm from. No. It's never got like all right, it might happen, but it's one in a million, do you know what I mean? And I'm sitting here still thinking now, why didn't I do that? And why didn't I just do this? And it's like I don't know, it's just frustrating. Yeah. There's so much obviously we'll talk about sort of buying when we come to it, but there's so much more than just putting a fucking talented kid into some foreign country mm. and going Go and be the player we all know you can be. Yeah. That's so... F- it, it doesn't work. Like, you no. C- you can't... So I almost feel it from listening to you. It's like you are, like, this, like, diamond in the rough. And they went, oh, he's, he's, there's a diamond in, but no one's actually went, but he needs to be polished and he needs to be... Yeah. They've just kind of went, yeah, it'll, it'll unpolish itself. Yeah. It's like, it'll unravel itself, and it, mm. it doesn't seem to... You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, but definitely, yeah. But it's you who picks the... Sorry to interrupt, but it's you who picks up the shit when people go... Like, they could have said, oh, he's fucking... He's a bit of a loose cannon, him. He's like, he's not a fucking loose cannon, but you just put him in a situation where, you know, there was only ever one outcome. Yeah. You, know, you mm-hmm. haven't given him any support. Yeah, yeah. I think that, with, especially when I was at Liverpool, like, the, the foreign players that came in, they got looked after well, do you know what I mean? Like, I went over there, and I was just on my own. It was just like, as you said, go and do what you're doing. Sort of thing. So I struggle with that that part of life. And if that if if if, you, if it's not right off the pitch, it's not going to be right on the pitch. Yeah. So I thought that was a bit of a you know a bit of a setback, injuries and stuff. But yeah, you need you need looking after, especially being that young, like a young kid. Like yeah. you, as you said, you, your brains you, you can't function like the opportunity you've got because you're still what seventeen and eighteen. Yeah, you know what I mean. Still like a young kid. I know people say that you know you know we have certain legal ages of drinking and stuff at eighteen, but. I'll I'll argue with anybody that you are not an adult at eighteen years of age. Like you, you, you don't no. you don't make adult decisions. Fucking thirty three. I don't have a question <laughs> <in it> now. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's true. But you, you're expected because there's money involved. You're expected to make certain decisions that are going to impact the rest of your life. Yeah. Imagine we all sat here with them high pressure situations at eighteen and had to had to say yes or no. As I remember, I bring up every time we get a sportsman on, I link it loads back to the military. I remember when I was injured, right, and there was a lad at eighteen, he'd just been injured. He got given a couple hundred grand, he lost both his legs. And at eighteen, he'd just been given like say, I don't know, quarter of a million quid. Albeit he's lost his legs, yeah. but he's still got this money. And I remember coming back one weekend and I was like, right, lad, are you up to? And he went, Ah, oh, I've just uh, he was on the laptop, that's what it was. And he's sitting there on the laptop, and I'm like, what are you looking at there? He went, just found a bit of land there in South Africa. And I went, all right, yeah, he went, yeah, I think I'm going to buy that. And I went, why have you been there before? He went, nah, just a good little investment in it, lad. At 18. And I'm going, Mad. why, what is it? He went, it's got a little bit of a castle on a little bit of an island. And I'm going, like, someone needs to put his fucking their arm around this yeah, kid yeah. and go, you've got no legs. That money's to last you the rest of your life. Fucking mm. speak to a financial advisor. Don't go on fucking South African fucking islands.com and buy yeah. a castle. <laughs> I swear to this what this kid was it's, doing. It's, it's funny, like, I don't even know what it's dangerous, isn't it? It is, it is dangerous. <laughs> it's scary, to be honest. Like, that, you know, being that young with all, all the money, doing what you want to do, like, it's, yeah. it is frightening, like. 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. I've got to be sad. He's sad. I like that, mate. Don't you? <laughs> what, um, how did sort of Tramia come about then? So you got released at Liverpool, was it 15? 15, yeah. Um, I went to a few clubs, went to Everton, Blackburn, Derby, nothing. As I said, like they were saying, like we've, we've heard your reputation, you're a good player, but we're not going to take the chance on you. So Arthur Edwards, it was, he, he sorted all the trials out for me and said, we've got one more team for you. He said, this'll be it though. So I went, yeah, he said, Sam, yeah. So I went over there, got the bus over and went on a six week trial and then signed, I think I signed after like a week. Was yeah. that youth, like in the yeah, youth team? For, for yeah, under 16s it was, I think. So then you, you find out whether you're getting like a scholarship, don't you? Yeah. Um, so I played under 16s and then got, got a YTS there two years and then my, sec- my first year, coming to the end of it, I got into the first team. So was you was that obviously a good time for you then, Sammy? Were like obviously playing well? Was you happy with it? Yeah, I was happy with it because I, I knew a few of the lads anyway. Few, when I went to Everton, like a few of the lads who'd been released from Everton and then were going to Tramia, so there was a few of us coming over from Liverpool over, jumping the bus over. So it was a good little vibe. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. we were all mates and that. So it was good. It was a good time. We, you know, we ain't great. We were on like fifty five quid a week. Do you know what I mean? Like a, like a YTI, YTS wages, but no, it was good. I enjoyed my footy there. Again, yeah, that's because I'm always fascinated. Sorry, to keep repeating, but I'm fascinated to know like the levels. Are you going there again, just ripping it up? And yeah, I felt like me, me, yeah, I went there and it was just like again, felt like I stood out um, playing. But there were some good players there as well. And again, like going going back to that where you're saying like scouts has got a bit of a chip on the shoulder. I was a bit like that lads are getting squad numbers, and a couple of lads got a squad number before me, and I was like, oh, what's going on here? And then got, got a squad number and was getting the team and that. And then I seen some lads training with the first team before me. And I was thinking, oh, this, something's not right here. Like, what's going on? So I remember sitting there, I think it was my mum at the time I was speaking to, and I said, if, if I'm not training with the first team next week, I said, I'm leaving. And she was like, oh, just, just hang on a minute. So a few weeks went by and then I got the call then to, to start training with the first team. And ever since then, I was in there. What was that? Like, obviously, I'm guessing at that time you got ultimate confidence, but... So that when you go in the first team, are you like, well, I fucking deserve to be here? Well, not, not in terms of, I'm guessing other kids would be like, right, there's, there's that step now. I'm in the first team. Let me bed myself in, impress. Was you going in there saying, well, I deserve to be with these anyway? Uh, no, not really. I thought you, you know, you've got an opportunity to play 17, 18. We shouldn't, you shouldn't really be there anyway, because you, you know, till after like your, you know, your, your second year, so you find out like you, you've got your pros and whatever, but. Are you, still, are you still on like 55 quid a week then? 55 you? quid a week, yeah. And then right. you, as it went up to like 65, I think the, the year after, you know, your second year. Um, so we're still on that, obviously, till, till you get offered your pro and then. But I think pro contracts were only like 150 a week. They'd be shite, do you know what I mean? Mm. If you find out at the end of, of your, your scholarship. But the, the, the pros were shite anyway, the money weren't great. Um, I got a good deal, to be fair, when I saw man. Man weren't too bad, but. Yeah, it was poor, like the wages. I just think mad being like that age on that money, playing first team. Yeah. That must have been mad. It is, because some, some of them don't really go into the first team. Although you've got like a pro, you, you still might get, be getting a look in. I think obviously once you're playing, we can be out or getting in the squad and on the bench and that. I think that's where you can go in and go, listen, I want to, I wanna, you know, sort, sort a better contract out if you can. I didn't do that. They they, they approached me with that, so I didn't, didn't think he would that, but... I was lucky enough to, to get a better deal. How quick did you go from, you know, right you're up to training to, to playing and scoring? Um, I think it was a few weeks. I think it was about three or four weeks. Um, Charlton, we were playing, and it was, it was the first time I got put on the bench, I think, and um, the winger got, Sam Morrow, his name was, got injured. There was like 20 minutes left, and Charlton were up there at the time. We were like near the bottom, good side. So we went warm up, so I'm like, all right, so he's waving to me, and I'm like, is he waving to me, yeah? <laughs> She goes, you're going on left wing, but I was a striker at the time, so like, oh, I haven't got a clue here. Just went on, and as soon as I get on the ball, I was just like being direct, fans all screaming, like getting, you know, getting them off the seat and that. Um, so I done well in my debut, and then started. I think I started the game after and scored, scored on like my full debut. Um, That's mad, that lad. Yeah. I love it. I love the innocence of like you know. I, know I just got on and just it. being direct, but I think that's what gets you to that point, doesn't it? It's like because. A lot of good players get to that point and then it's, it's like... It's got to that, change almost. No, it's overthinking, think. isn't it? It's like yeah. whereas your natural instinct might be to get on the ball and run at mm. the defender, but you might go, fucking hell, shit, he's played 200 fucking league games. I better turn around and just give it to the left back yeah. and just crack, crack on. Yeah. You know I mean? I think it's like you, changing what, you, what yeah, you've got, what got, got you there. there. But yeah. I, you have to have that little bit, as you said earlier, that bit of arrogance to be like, nah, I'm going yeah. for it. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm getting at him all yeah. game, give him a, t- a horrible time for 20 minutes. Um, yeah. 
you know, like I, I didn't think of nothing. Like it, they, you can either go one way, you can go on there and play shit and don't get a look in again, or you can go in there and have a worldy, and then you show it in the squad. The fans have seen you. You know what I mean? That that's what it, as I said. Like if you go in there and have a stinker of a game, you're not gonna get another chance, are you? Because you're probably mm. thingy, but lucky enough for me, like I done well. Once that came on, then was you then? Was it a case of like like Dale's in the team now, sort of thing? He's, I think so, yeah, yeah, because yeah, I, I was in, I was, I was, I think I was playing every week from then. Mm. You wasn't just doing a bit of reading on you. You weren't playing long before there was like there was certain interest and stuff from. I think somewhere said there was an unnamed Premier unnamed League, Premier League yeah. yeah, unnamed Premier League club. And did you was you aware of this like in terms of you know a bit of hype being built around it? Yeah, I knew there was because the you know, my agents at the time was was saying like clubs were coming to watch yeah. Yeah, uh, we, we knew the types of clubs that would, you know, turn up to watch. Um, so I knew there was loads of interest in me, but obviously the no buying were gonna be there, but mm. I knew there was loads of top teams watching like. And you did you see Tramia as as just that, like not to be disrespectful, but was for Tramia for you was it like getting the team play and then, you know, going back to where where it belongs, sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think for everyone, like at any walk of life, you want to be playing or working in the best place you you can. Do you know what I mean? I wanted to play at the highest level, and I knew I could play either them what I was playing when I was playing. Um, so yeah, no disrespect. You sort of you do get that interest, and you're like, no, when's this when's this move gonna happen? Type thing, um, and a couple of things happen where like stuff didn't get put over the line, and I didn't get told about things and. It moved on, do you know what I mean? So my, my head started working and thinking, well, I, I should be playing somewhere higher here, do you know what I mean? And that's been declined without me knowing type thing. Mm. Um, so my, my performance has started to fade towards the end of the season, I thought. It started first first few months like sharp, do you know what I mean? And then it sort of faded off a little bit then. It must be hard though knowing that both big clubs are coming in for you and that though, and that's obviously why you you start thinking other things. Yeah, because like. you, you think that like has that, that opportunity gone now? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You sort of you are thinking like uh, have I missed out on that type thing, but footy footy's a strange game. Like you know, you can you have a good year and you could be you could be playing somewhere mad and then you'd have a bad year and you you know, you dropped a few leagues yeah. down. You know what so fascinating to know, you know, you talk about like your kind of like your attitude and stuff like that going through there. When you kind of them are in the Sammy first team, you're playing with fellas week in, week out. Yeah. What was that like? Because again, you're still a young kid yourself, you know, you talk about you know, in the Marines, we had like initiation ceremonies, and yeah. like you know, there's a kind of pecking order and a hierarchy and stuff. What was that like being so young, but in a proper man's kind of dressing room? Yeah, because I was quite, I, I was quite lively, like a lively kid, like their confidence. And up then, when I went to the obviously with the with the the older lads and that, I was quiet, so I was like just sitting there, like being being thingy. So that was on. You got to go in and sing and all that in front of the magnet. So I'm like sh- sitting there shaking, <laughs> singing. What did you sing? Uh, follow me, Uncle Cracker. <laughs> yeah, I went to my go to. Yeah, it's so uh, easy to learn. Yeah. Everyone goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was sitting there with a uh, pack of digestives or something, sing- singing on a on a stool in front of all the first team. Um, but no, it, it's good. That's a, that's a good icebreaker to be fair yeah. to, to get you in there. But yeah, it was. Uh, it's a bit daunting, obviously, going from mm. with all your mates to playing and then. I'm cleaning boots and then I've been told you don't have to clean his boots, get one of the lads to clean your boots. So I'm not going to go and tell one of the lads to clean my boots because I'm playing first team footy, so I was, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's a bit, bit one of them, but, but yeah, a bit, bit of a mad one. If it was one. Jordan, he was off, he'd probably still get me still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A week later, he'd be going, yeah, lad, do mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at Shell and Elk. Do you know, because you were good or because, you know, you were a bit of a standout from the from the youth teams, did you get any respect from the first team in terms of, like, you know, we know he's... We know he's good, and he does. Because I guess sometimes with the first team, when someone comes up and they maybe don't hold their own, it's almost like you say it's the hierarchy, isn't it? It's like yeah. you know, he's probably not going to cut it him, mm. give him an hard time, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I think obviously, like when you first start, like the lads are probably watching, thinking, "Oh, what's he about?" But I think once I got my feet under the table, I did have respect from the players. Mm. It's important, that, isn't it? I guess like to to kick on because. You know, if you're not a part of the group, so to speak, it's hard to really yeah, put yeah. a decent performance in, isn't yeah. it, or to break into the team. That's what I felt like I was like a buy-in because the language barrier was was thing. I felt like there'd be times where I wasn't that didn't feel like I was involved with the lads and that. And you, you do, you feel like you you know when you're playing, it does take it does affect you. Yeah. How did that all come about? Then, like Bayern Munich, because. It's just it's such the a first transfer ever in it from Tramway to Bayern, that's gotta be like Yeah, it's gotta be. But yeah. it's like you said yeah. before, like you you know, you rightly said I don't think it would happen again and I would put money on the fact that Tramway no ain't ever doing business with Bayern again. Like. <laughs> no, but and no one from that sort of league or down there would get signed by Bayern unless they're yeah. you know, freaks. <laughs> yeah. It was a bit of a mad one. It was 
obviously with Haman played against the man, he was at MK Dons and you know, had, had scored two, got an assist and got brought down for the pen, one four two. And again, they were up there as well. I think they were going for a promotion and I just ran the game. And her man was playing for them. He brought me down actually for the pen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he brought me down for the pen. I know. So um, obviously he's he's put a word in and got got them to come and watch me. Did he, man? He yeah. must have come off that pitch and just thought, "What the fuck have I just played against <laughs> here?" That's he's a still, mad still, story. You still see clips of it, and I just look at it and I just think, like, I was rapid. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just be like, even now, like, I get the ball, and if not, and John, I'll, pu- I'll play, and I'm a bit more. Discipline with me, but now I was just like raw. I was like, every time I get the ball, I'm going to beat someone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'll turn in little tight spaces and beat three players and do something mad. And like my game changed. And like they do loads of analysis on players. So like they go, oh, the, the right back likes to get on and you know, he's quick and all that. And I didn't want to know. I, I just wanted to see what it was like when I played against them. I mm. thought that sort of affects you. Like when you, as you get older, because you sort of got that in the back of your head. Now he's going to be getting on here. Um, so I think that changed a little bit. but. As you said, I just wanted to get on and, and play. I went not asked whether he he was you know twenty eight and I was eighteen. Like it, you know that didn't bother me that. Mm. And did so? Did you know it was like? Did you put the word in? Did it did that come up come out of it or? I think it did come out. Yeah, because he was he was in my agents, uh, and he rang me and said the man's here. He spoke to he spoke to Bayern. Like, what are your thoughts on it? So I went down and spoke to him, and he just he, he mentioned that he spoke to the director of football and they were eager to have me and he look after it and he thinks it's the right time for me to go and all that. So. I guess in theory, obviously, going, someone like you who is a bit raw, you know, might, might have a few sort of a temptation to do stupid stuff outside of a footy pitch. I guess in theory, it's a good thing, isn't it? You know, get him away. Yeah, put, get him out of this environment. Get him yeah. out of yeah. like, the people he's around, put him a bit of structure around him. But unless you come through and, you know, you do go over there and you send people with you to you know, help you learn the language and all this stuff, it's just, did you know pretty quickly over there that, you know, this is going to be hard? Yeah. As soon as I went, like I, as you said, it all sounds good speaking to someone on the phone or all on paper. Yeah, it looks bossed that, and then you, you go over there and you're like, oh, I know, what have I done here? But I, I did, I wanted to move away. I needed mm-hmm. to get away because I, I was just getting roped into everything. Not that it was with me mates, it was me half the time as well. But I was just in a b- bad circle, um, doing stuff that I'm not proud of. Uh, I just wanted to, to be away because even though I was still playing, I was still. Acting up outside the footy. Yeah. Oh, even at Sammy. Even like at Sammy, yeah, I'd still, I'd still be thinking and doing, you know, going out doing stupid shit. Even, even like we'd go out drinking and, and whatever, you'd always end up fighting or something. I was just like, I need mm. to get away because something bad's going to happen here. Um, so that that was a big thing for me, moving out to the city. So, sort of, when you, who did you go over to, to uh, Munich with? Just on I went over with my ex. Yeah. So just you two put in Munich? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I went over for a few weeks on my own and then she flew over. Um, was she expected to get a job then and just like live a life and just be... I don't know what she expected, like, just to be fair, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, we should have went over on my own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, um, sort of, what's the, not to go in particular with uh, financials, but when you sign for buying, are you then put on, you know, like more, more money, sort of like, are you living in a different sort of world then when you're over at buying? Yeah, obviously, like the the money was good, like big money for a, for a kid that age. Obviously, like signing on fees and stuff. So like, as I went over there with like buttons, and then like a few weeks later, I was like looked at my bank and was like, wow, oh, what's going on? Didn't know what to do with that type of money. Um, so that's another tough thing as we were speaking about, like being eighteen, mm. and sort of like having a, going from not to having like a, a good bit of money. Mm. It's hard, I guess. You're, you know, you just said you were getting into stupid stuff. So that temptation's obviously there in your personality at that time as anyway, isn't it? So when you add, you know, not unlimited, but a lot of dough yeah. to someone who's prone to making decisions like that, it, it you know, you're gonna you're gonna inevitably either get into trouble or find yourself bored and doing stupid stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like I I, I sort of got into a bit of gambling as well, to be fair. Like so I was like that that was a bit of a um, a downfall. I think that was more when I came back from Munich that you know, going to casinos and all that, like, and I, I got into a bit of a rut there with, with gambling and that, so, again, just being young and thinking this this is going to last me forever mm. type thing, so that was a bit of a tough one to deal with. So the setup in Munich, was you, uh, no, was you introduced to, like, who was there, what players were there at that time? It must be, like, Ribery and Robin and yeah, all yeah. players. Yeah, all the top players, Swan, Stag, Alarm, no, yeah. All, <laughs> Some side that, like. Yeah, mad. But you went in with the with the like the reserve team. Yeah, second team. Yeah, but we had we had good players there. Um, to be fair, and 
you know, they were still like I was eighteen, they'd be lads there, it would be like twenty six, twenty seven, like they'd be older players still in there. Um uh, lads who, who weren't getting sorted in the first team of training and and play some some games with us mm. and stuff. Um so yeah, the, the standard was high to be fair. Even you think the plan was for me to go over there and sort of be out of that in like a year, do you know what I mean? But obviously that didn't happen. Um but yeah, there were some top players, some top players there. Yeah, you had some bad injuries quite like early on, didn't you? In the- yeah, I failed my medical. Um don't I had an ear on my groin. So I was out for three months and then came back and then done my other side and then done my ligaments and my ankle. So it was a bit of a nightmare of a first year, to be honest. It was sort of it and miss coming back, like playing and then I'd be playing for a few weeks and then be out again. It was just like just a nightmare. So you so literally from your medical there was like there was injury problems like yeah. it was early as that. Yeah, I, fa- so- I failed at state of it. There was like no he still signed failed. You yeah. They didn't want to, they were like, no, we are gonna have to fail him and my agent was you done well to be fair, he so said you're telling us you've got like the best medical staff in football, do you know what I mean? And you fail them over an area. So in the end he like had a meeting and was like, Oh yeah, we'll we'll do it. We can look after them and and whatever, so they, they put it through. It's mad how highly then they're thinking of you then, lads. Yeah, it is. It was because uh, I, I know, like, and I, well, I, I nearly failed at an MK Dons as well over my neighbor. I, I was going to sign a two year deal there, and they, they went because you knew, like, we'll give it a year. Contracts so, over, as I said, going into medicals, I, I always thought I was going to fail, like, mm-hmm. my body's just good knock it. With them injuries starting, so then, so at Samia, with you, like, your injury issues starting as early as that, yeah, yeah because Samia. sometimes you hear of people who will get to. You know, 22, 23, and then you know they might get one bad injury, and that sort of rolls onto all the rest of them. But yeah. for you, was it just a constant issue from a young age? From Sam, yeah. Like at Liverpool, I never had one injury. I was just like not on. I had no setbacks playing there. I had no setbacks from as soon as I got into the first team a couple of weeks before the first team. Felt my knee, and I was struggling, couldn't walk, and I was still playing with an injury, playing for Sam, yeah, in the first team. But I could sort of manage it, do you know what I mean? But it was still in the back of my my mind. Like now, like I still still struggle. If I look after if I look after and rehab it, it's, it it can be fine, do you know what I mean? But it's just it's always been there since like eighteen. Mm. It's crazy how like obviously getting over there, you, you still got this attitude of like you're still a street kid, really, aren't you? Do you know what I mm. mean? But then you put into this I'm guessing buying was a different level of professionalism than you've sort of ever seen before. Yeah, yeah. Like you go out you you'd very rarely go out for a drink with the lads might be the end of the year or like when you're playing over here you'd probably be out a few times a season you know what I mean going out but it was it was you know the food like you you, you go out and you get your food and like coach or the physios and sports scientists will be coming looking over at your plate you know what I mean like making sure what you're eating and all mm-hmm. that so Just that, that was more like there was more discipline over there how are you living like when you're not with them like when you were when you were this girl like your ex-missus I mean what are you eating what are you doing I mean what's because it's a whole culture thing, isn't it? Different. Yeah. I was eating shit, just eating what I wanted to eat. Go out, have meals. There was an Italian restaurant over the road. There was a nene enough every night, do you know what I mean? Not cooking and that. Um, so that was a bit of a downfall. I, I was on... I played with the first team in a, in a friendly. So, like, coming after the game, getting, like, a rub on that, and, like, the, the, the first team physio come over and, like, grab me belly and was like, oh, no, 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 and all that. And I was like... So he sort of knew, and he could see that I'd been putting weight on. That was in my second year. My first year weren't too bad. I started putting a little bit of weight on then, and they was on to me then, saying, like, no fizzy drinks, no this, like, you know, trying to sort my diet out and all that. Because, um, as I said, the discipline, aren't they? The Germans are so, yeah. so thingy, like, mm. even the way of life, just the way they are, like, it's... It is so structured. Did you feel that jump straight away then? I mean, obviously, your first year, you're marred by injuries a little bit, but, like, did you feel the sort of, from Tramier to Bayern Munich, did you really feel how... Not just on the pitch, and you said the standard was good, but the whole world of being, you know, one of the most professional clubs that is on the planet, basically. Yeah, you could definitely feel the difference in it. Mm. Uh, just ever, ever in the bar at the footy, the style of play. But the sessions were tougher. Um, the likes of pre-season and stuff, we wouldn't do loads of running like Satrami. You'd, you'd be running up Movamer and you know sandals and muddles and everything. Um, you wouldn't do much of that. Like we'd go away to like Italy or Turkey or somewhere and it'd just be loads of ball work, loads of technical stuff. But the sessions were quite they were quite tough. Mm. I think you know, you said you kinda of, your attitude had always been from eight and nine, you've always just been like, I'll, I'll rip it like wherever I go, I'm confident in myself. Did that confidence getting knocked up by him when you're seeing like the level or was you still kind of nah I'll smash it here or was you a little bit I, actually, you know what? Might be I might found, you know, 
not quite my level or you know yeah no my confidence was high I still thought like I can I can you know do all right there and then you, you get injuries and then you, you don't feel like the same I, I didn't feel like that player that left when I was playing do you know what I mean and that, we, that did knock me confidence and I've always been a confidence player mm. so once my confidence gone I felt I thought oh, this is me done trying mm. to get your confidence back and stuff like that Um. So yeah, I definitely think if you're playing with low confidence, it's no good for you. Especially in like a, you know, a foreign country where you know how was the language stuff and sort of how was it develop like adapting to being in German culture? Um, that was tough for me. Um, just just the way of life, like it was quite regimental. I was like, get up, go to train, and come home, sit in sit in the apartment, get up, and it was just the same thing. Nothing else was happening in my life, mm. and if it, it was tough to deal with, do you know what I mean? Obviously, being out there, like sort of. Speaking to no one, doing not and not having no social life, and that was 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 tough. Did you learn the language? No, not really. I learned for about six months, and you know, I just I wouldn't have the confidence to speak. Mm. But I'd, I'd understand like little bits that was getting said. If they was doing like a little bit of a team talk, I'd pick little little bits up mm. and go off that. But in the end, he just said we'll speak we'll speak English there. Yeah. Mm. It's the it's I hard. Know what song you sang as well, sorry, on the on initiation. Do you have to do? Do you have all that no, over there? Didn't have it, no, didn't have it. <laughs> did you know what No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> uh, I didn't do one at. I've done one at Sammy. I didn't do one at like but Barnsley. I didn't do one at then. You'd have to pay a fan. I think it was fifty quid. If you don't do it, I was like, I'll just take the fan. Like I'm not, I'm not getting up singing again. I'm not my leg was shaking and everything. I'm like, no, that's just not. I can't speak. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't like publicly speaking. Yeah. And I'm sitting here talking to you now, but. You know, if I've got to stand up and speak in front of people, like even man of the matches after the games, you'd have to get up and you'd be in like the, the players' lounge and family would be there and you'd have to speak. And it was like that. I didn't want to get man of the match for that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, give it to someone else. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what the most interesting thing for me is, mate? It's the fact that, like, you know, your talent, you, you were naturally born with it, I guess. But then you've been put in these situations that are so alien to someone, you know, like Hood, like you, yeah. where you're from. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I, I can't imagine. It's like. It, it, <laughs> of studios nice. just falling down, but I like, mean, Andy would sit here and go, "Fucking hell, he, he had the chance there to go and play for Bayern Munich. Imagine how good that would be." But then the reality of it is, you were just a young kid who loved playing footy. Yeah, you know, might have been a bit of a tear away off the pitch, but just loved playing footy. And then you just put to one of these big, massive clubs, and it's like, how are you meant to? Did, did you did you have like mental health wasn't really a thing then, was it? But I mean, did you have? Doubts and stuff when you were on, Struggles, you yeah. know, when you're on your own in the apartments and you're thinking, "Fuck me, this is like this is so big." Yeah, I think because the expectation of going over there, like people, I think people sort of was expecting it to fail anyway. Yeah, like it was too much of a big step up. So I wanted to prove people wrong, um, and then obviously it didn't go to plan how I wanted it to go. You sort of you paint a picture and you're like, "This is what's going to happen. I'm going to be." Playing here in front of eighty thousand fans and sort of like it just didn't happen the way I wanted to. So that was that was a tough one to take. Um, and then obviously being there for two years and another year left on my contract, and then deciding I wanted to leave. And they're saying, "Oh, Guardiola's coming in. I wait till he has a look at you." And I'm like, "No." And then so I've left there and thought, "Why didn't I stay? Why didn't I just like sort to yeah. see what he thought of me and?" See what might have happened, you know what I mean? So you'd have you'd have them regrets in your head, but I just wanted to come home, me. Like I just I, I don't think he could have done another year there. Mm. Even despite the fact Guardiola's coming and they're yeah. saying to you let him have a look at you and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I was just I, I was just tunnel vision, like get me home. Mm. I need I need to be like around my family. Type thing. That's hard that in it, like in terms mm. of, you know, I'm guessing you knew pretty like in guess after eighteen months something look I wanna get home. But you still got that sort of naivety of being young. But like, if they're saying to you, Guardiola's coming in, it's hard for you to then go, oh, all right, yeah, no problem. I'll just put all these thoughts I'm having back at home. Yeah. I'll just put that in a box and I'll just wait for this manager to come in. Yeah, that yeah. might send me career in a different direction. Yeah. But was you sort of like, how quick from, like, I want to go home to did it, you actually land them back in the UK? I must have decided like a couple of months before that because they were having none of it, to be fair. They were like, no, no, he's got another year left. Yeah. So a three-year deal, was it? Three-year deal, yeah. So, um I think I, I went home for after the season ended and come back. Oh no, I didn't. Sorry, it was before the season ended. We decided, we decided then, and they said, well, if if they pay, if you get someone to pay two hundred fifty grand for you, you can go. That's all going for you. So I spoke to the likes of Huddersfield and Barnsley and that, and decided to go to Barnsley. So that's how that came about. 
it's funny that in success, like they've they've put a value on you of course of a million pounds but then yeah. you have to then go out and get in with your agent and stuff and find somebody prepared to pay 250 grand for it just yeah. but the only thing you want to do is get home do you know what I mean yeah, but yeah. it's all that stuff around it that you've got to yeah. you've got to organise that's it dude as I said that's a lot of money for like a kid who's still un- sort of obviously I proved myself in League One playing for Tamiya but I've been out the country for two years and had injuries and hadn't done much so that that's a lot of money for someone to go yeah come on we're just going to we'll pay that and then you've got to get personal terms right and is it going to be worth me going down there type thing and stuff like that so there's a lot that goes into to everything really mm. but I think buying at that point they're probably in a win win aren't they because they're thinking we'll get 250 grand for him or he'll stay and he could turn out to be this this wonder kid yeah, yeah. it's win win for them yeah isn't yeah it? That's what I'm saying. Like I was surprised, like because I, I didn't feel like the love, to be honest, like that they wanted me to stay. So when they were saying no, we want him to stay, I was a bit like surprised, like you now where's this coming from? Hmm. You know what I mean? So did you, so it was you left and then Guardiola turned up, was it? Yeah, he came that he came the, t- the season I left. Hmm. It's crazy, and how close it is. But when you get so you come back and obviously Barnsley do front up the money for you. Are you? Do you land back in England or head to Barnsley like, right, I'm fucking ready now, I'm going to, you know, make a real go at this? Yeah. Or are you still, a, is the is that doubt sort of crept in at that point? No, I think I, I went there and I felt fresh, um, but went away, went on holiday for a few weeks, come back. I went back and fit again, but we went to pre-season in Marbella and I was playing and I just thought, I feel like I'm, it's, I've took a step down, like playing, with, not being like disrespectful because they had some unbelievable players at Barnsley, but... I felt good during training and it was like, it felt a little bit easier for me than playing in Germany. And so I thought, I'm, I'm all right here, do you know what I mean? And then again, just like things started happening, like no discipline, little knocks, little injuries. I think I got sent off on my debut um, against Wigan. So that's another few weeks out and then you're in the manager's bad books and it's just, just that, that circle, that cycle going again. Yeah. Mm. But like, when you go into Barnsley, is, do you have that thing of, yeah, he's fucking, this is, Jennings from Bayern Munich sort yeah. of thing. Did you have that sort of, not hang, I guess, yeah, hanging over yeah. your head of when as soon as you got in the door? You got, yeah, you'd have it. The fans were all going mad. Like, the players, even the players, like, the best always being at Bayern. And, you know, just, I still get it now, like, when I play, get stick off everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you, you, the expectations I have yet to, to come in and play, um, especially being still only, like, I must have been 19, 20, or 20. Yeah. Um, so I'm still young, young and fresh, you know what I mean? People expecting things, yeah. And I did, I done all right, could have done better, but hmm. again, like, I, I just look at my career and it just could have been so much better than what it was. I'd mad when you're saying that, then you're thinking 20, Barnsley, and you've had all this experience at Liverpool, Tram, here at yeah. Bayern. Yeah. I think that's what I, like, not to disrespect you, I'm sure you wouldn't take it that way, but I think that's the problem. You get, like, at that it's age... too much, too yeah, young. but, like... But people look at you and go, fucking hell, he didn't half throw it all away. Yeah. Like, you, that's not the full story. That's no, what I'm learning no. here, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it's so unfair, I think, and I guess why it frustrates me so much when, you know, at 20, he's going in and there's, I guess, 40 and 45-year-old fellas in the stands. Like, right, there's Dale Jennings, he's from Munich. He's going to he's gonna take us right yeah, up the league in, do you know what I mean? But yeah. you're a 20-year-old kid. Like, how emotionally developed can you be? To deal with that mm. pressure, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Just doesn't just doesn't work like that, no. does it? Like it's always the same, you know, some it's always the same types of people that are giving you the the, the shit, you know what I mean? Mm. And just think everything's just like that. Nothing's like that in life. No. You know, playing football, work and doing anything, raising a family, like these ups and downs everywhere, and it's the same with same with footy. Mm. Some people deal with them better than others. Like you know, I've I've had some terrible times in, in my life, do you know what I mean? And trying to play footy or get back into footy with stuff that goes on in your life it's just it, it's just not not important you know it just mm. gets put to the back of your head I, I got to a stage where I thought of it never kick a ball again it is what it is yeah and that's the thing that don't people don't realise what we're going to like come into like personal stuff but you've got all this shit going on but to that like you say 45 year old fella on a Saturday afternoon he's like why isn't Dale playing away like they've got no idea about all the shit that you've got going on in your life no, have they? I know that's what I mean so but as I said, it's the same people that them keyboard warriors and ugh, I, I've messaged people like wanting to go and meet them and all that like that's because they just they give you abuse, you know what I mean? And you don't people go don't look at it, but you can't you can't not look at it like who do who do they think they are giving you shit? You don't even know me, do you know what I mean? Mm. And it's not even like good opinions, it's like the deep, do you know what I mean? Some of the stuff deep and it's like getting compared to other players and young kids that are trying to make something 
and people are knocking them before they've done it. Like as you said, forty year old fellas like trying to trying to slag a seventeen year old kid off who, who's doing something like you know what I mean? Old enough to be your dad, probably got kids my age or whatever, yeah. and he's sitting there trying to leather someone. You know mm. what I mean? Imagine doing that. Imagine me sitting mm. there, I'm thirty next year, like slagging a kid off there who's who's sixteen trying to trying to like make a, yeah. a career for himself. Like I just don't see where. Like, what, the, what do they get out of it? In any other walk of life, you wouldn't do it, would you? No. For example, if you were an accountant and you'd done, you'd like, say you were 40 and you'd done all this stuff, but then the new kid come on, you're just like, <laughs> accountant. He's like, no, this kid will come from the university, whatever, and you're like, fucking eat garbage, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> you just yeah. wouldn't do it, no. would you? Like, but in footy, it's just, all, it's just accepted. It's like, yeah, yeah they, these these fellas earn X amount of money, so they're just, they're just mm. free, fair game. Do yeah. whatever you want with them. You still being like a little tear away at Barnsley as well. I'm guessing you, like most twenty year old lads type thing. You still probably getting up to no good and stuff. Or you know, how was how was that kind of you know pathway at Barnsley yeah. kind of go? No, my first year went. Uh, I was sort of like on it, and then I came back for the pre pre season. I got an apartment in down um, in Liverpool. I was just out with all the lads. I was just like, just start. Just like, like, just I was just like going back, just on the aisle, near enough every night. You know what I mean? Just having a bit of a mad one um, with all my mates and that and went back oh, I was my second sorry that was my sort of my second year because I'd signed a three year contract at Barnsley but they were, they were sending me for like whole testing Bolton University saying like your fitness is poor putting me on VL2 maxes and all that and I was, the levels I was in was like nowhere near good enough for a professional footballer and he said we're paying you like fortunes to play and you can't even last like 10 minutes on that to that middle do you know what I mean so I was living that life, just... Did you say again. to him, because I've been on the aisle all week? <laughs> <laughs> been, on the aisle class, for, been on the aisle for six weeks straight. Um, <laughs> no, but, yeah, I came back with all my mates that I hadn't seen for years and was just catching up, do you know what I mean? And they got away from me. Um, and, you know, just, that, it just went downhill from mm-hmm. then, then again. Were you still performing, like, on the on the pitch in, after your first year? Yeah, that was because the first year, the second year, I got Young Player of the Year, uh, doing well. Like, I got in, like, chat or League One, I think. I was, then we went, we got relegated. I think League One, team of the month and goal of the month. So I was getting, and you know, I was, I was doing all right. I went like proper in the background, just like collecting a wage, not doing nothing. I was still there, like in and around the squad, like playing and stuff. But again, like as you said, you'd have them expectations. Like I should be doing better than what I was doing. Um, yeah. So yeah. Did you ever feel like at that point, uh, not not then, but now? That you did miss the, the like that that father figure the you know someone to say to you look come pipe down a bit do you yeah. know what I mean? go go and get your head down go and like go and live in Barnsley or something these people around you are not are not good for you. Yeah, um, I, I my agent at the time Sangi was like that he was good you know he looked after me and everything and he, he was like he was sort of like that like you know he had your best interest at heart like he he do anything for you but that was like the closest thing to that but like as I said like my brother was was there but. He went because he was away. Um, so I've never had that. F- no, my mum's raised us all her life on her own. So I've yeah. never had a father figure. Yeah, and I knew I could get away with things then. And I was just like, no one's telling me what to do. It's like mm-hmm. thing. But I see like the support of kids now, like what the parents give them, and it's good. I think they need you need you need good um, support in your life, especially in footy, because I know how bad it is. I know mm-hmm. like it's just some of the things I see in footy is shocking, mm-hmm. and for young kids to deal with. You need honest support as well, don't you? You need people who aren't afraid to say to you, like, that's not the right thing to do. Mm. You know, you need someone who's got, I guess, not the bollocks, but has got enough about them to say to you, for example, at that age at Barnsley, you probably needed someone to say to you, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, Yeah, you're you're out in town. You're like, you're probably going to throw this away if you don't. But I guess when you're earning money like that and, you know, you're probably paying for people's bevies and you've got a nice apartment that people are spending all weekend in. Yeah. No one's gonna say to you, Daddy. No one's gonna go, mm. lad. Fucking sort your head out a little bit. Yeah, everyone thinks it's funny at the time. Do you know what I mean? And then, as you said, like shit, it's the fun, and you're struggling, or you're doing other things, and you know you look at you look at who's there behind, you and there's no one. But that was I was with thirty people the other week. Do you know what I mean? Or last year, and I'm here out of a club, struggling mentally, thinking, am I gonna pay for my house? Or am I gonna pay for my cars or whatever? And no one's there helping you, but mm. you're all right looking after everyone else and. That that it that was a bit of a eye opener for me. I just thought, you know what, I don't need these types of people in my life. Yeah. So I just got my head down and sort of cracked on. I matured a little bit. Um, got with me bit my new bed and now I've got three kids to it. So we she sort of put me on the straight and narrow. Um, and sort of my head out of it. So is that sort of when you were coming to the end of your time at Barnsley? 
yeah, we got together then when I left Barnsley, so we moved to the Nantwich it was because we I signed for MK. Yeah. So we were just we moved to Nantwich and then was getting the, I was getting the training into the to MK Dons with a few of the other lads that was that was travelling there. Yeah. It comes across to me as well. I must say, obviously, I don't love football and stuff, but it makes me like when I spoke when like Paddy Lacey maybe or Adam Morgan and when they talk about football, they're a bit like. To me, it seems like yeah. your kind of personal life and maybe struggles and just life experience, maturity, whatever you want to call it, you've just got a different view on football. You say that's true. Like, I'm not saying you don't yeah. like football, but you just seem to be. I hit a stage, yeah. I hit a stage where I was like, I just had too much, too much drama with it. Like, I just, it's stress. It's stress. It's stress now. Still playing like on a Saturday and then I play Sunday for my mates' team on a, and that, even that stress. You know what I mean? Playing at this level, you still get people going like expect things, yeah. And you're sort of playing and you're like, yeah, and, and that's fair enough because people should do, but I don't know, like, you, you look at your life and you think, do you really need that? Do you really need it? I've been saying for, like, years that I'm going to have a proper go, I'm going to, I'm going to go for it and just sort of haven't, and that makes me think, do I love it as much as I used to love it? Do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I, I don't know whether I do or I don't. It, it's a bit of a tough one. I think once I'm flying and, and I'm fit, I do, because I, ha- I can do things on the pitch, I'm like, you know? And then when you're nodding, you're just playing just to just to be there and help people out or turn up you're like, can I what am I doing? So I guess it's also like a little bit of a it's like a bruised ego in it, because like sometimes I guess now, even probably when you're playing now, you probably do you know, you put performances in a guess where people go, Oh, you played well today, Dale, but you'll be like, That's not me, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm at like what I what I can do mm. when I'm fit and stuff. Yeah. You know, people's expectations of a good performance and your expectations on yourself of a good performance, I'm guessing, are two completely different things. Yeah, because as you said, you do, you get, you know, like a manager coming up, oh, you've done well there, and I'm like, what, what were you watching there? Because for me, my standards, like, should be ten times that, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I'm turning up playing, like, I'm meant to be out now for a few weeks, and I'm sitting here thinking I'm not coming back till I'm 100% fit, because we play now and we get, like, a few hundred fans there watching and, like, I'm running around like overweight or struggling and like limping about and then I'm like, what's the point of me turning up? Because people people come to watch the game. Some people come to watch you play personally and you're just not doing it on the pitch. Like yeah. for me it's just not, not worth it. So when you get to sorry, when you get to MK, this is so you do 2013 Barnsley, you do a couple of years there, and then you go to Milton Keynes on 2015. Is that when I was? Yeah, yeah. so like obviously <coughs> but then you obviously leave them after a short period because of Stuff that goes on in your personal life. Um, do you want to touch on that a bit? Yeah, that was just, I, that, that was a bit of an injury as well. That to be fair, he had mm. an, an injury and I was out. He said that I'd only be out for a couple of weeks and then it was, I think it was out for like six months. And in the end, he said season's coming to an end. Like we're paying you again. We're paying you a decent wage. Like we can't. We don't think you're going to make it to the end of the season. So we just terminated the contract and moved on from there. Yeah. Um, and then getting back into footy, um, I went to the likes of Southport and stuff. It was good, they were all right, and then at the, my little girl was three at the time and got diagnosed with leukaemia. Um, so everyone just got put on hold, do you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, that was just a bit of an head fuck with that one. How old are you then, sorry? Um, I'm 29 now, so that was four years ago. Not even then, you're 25, 25, 25 yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, Young fella still. <laughs> like dealing with something like, like my arts part, and I'm even talking mm. about it gets me like. Um, yeah, it's just tough seeing, seeing like your, your kid going through that and, and you're still getting abuse off people on fucking Twitter saying he's out of footy and he's not, but you, people don't understand like like what you're going through, what your family's going through. Mm. Um, sitting there like, you know, seeing your daughter going, getting, going through treatments and everything and two and a half years she was getting treatment for and it was just like, that was me sort of, I couldn't get myself back into it, do you know what I mean? I couldn't mm. even get out of bed, never mind, and go and run around the pitch and try and get fit, I think. Um, so, yeah, it was just never-ending, to be honest, a couple of years. So like you say, though, it's like your attitude on footy, which comes through, but it sort of just pales into insignificance, doesn't it, when, you know, you're, you're then in a hospital and your daughter's going through treatment for, you know, a very, very, very serious illness. How's the stuff like... How's the pressure for you? Because, obviously, you get to 25 and you've been at these clubs and I guess that's your living. What's the pressure like for you when you're like, right, my daughter's ill, but I can't really go and earn a living the way I was anyway? Is, yeah. that, is that hard? Yeah, that's hard because I felt like I was getting back into footy and I thought I'm going to still go and earn an all right wage, even if it is at a low level, still get by with, on, you know, with the good thing. But I couldn't even 
you know, turn to drink. I, was, I started drinking, putting weight on. Um, and then I, I obviously had to find a job, being out to work for like two years, couldn't, couldn't sit there. So I'm trying to work while I'm taking my daughter in for, you know, for treatment. Um, so it's tough time. And then you've got two, two other kids there at the time. Um, trying to just get your life around that, do you know what I mean? It's just like, it's mad, you just, you just feel like you're never going to get a break. And then you're thinking, is she going to be all right? What if, what if this happens and you, you don't know what's going to get said, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's tough. What was your partner like through all this? Well, she's obviously seeing you from, obviously, like the kind of MK Dons where you kind of earn a decent wage, you know, yeah. your house, you've got, you know, three kids there and everything, Rosie, think, and, and then obviously, you talk about the support that's maybe there when you're doing well. Yeah. I mean, what's the support like with the intimate support with just you and your missus when all this shit hits the fun? That was good. That's she's, she's one person that I can say has been there through me through thick and thin. Do you know what I mean? Um, she, as I said, if it weren't for her, like I would have fucking probably I was I was in a bad bad way like with stuff that was going on with the baby at the time. Like so, she kept me. She did keep me from doing stupid shit. Um, so I I was lucky there because. I felt like that was mainly the, the support I got. You didn't really get support off, you know, like doctors or no one. Like I'd, I'd go in and say, like, I'm depressed, like, I, I can't, can't do nothing. Like, crying myself to sleep enough every night, like, thinking what's going on. And they're just like, oh, but, you know, you'll be all right, and giving me tablets, and, like, tablets aren't working, and, and I'm sitting there, like, trying to, trying to get my life on track, trying to be strong for the baby, and it's just like, it's not happening, do you know what I mean? And then you get good news, like, oh, she's finishing the treatments, and then, Couple of weeks later, it was about two months actually. She she had like a pain in the side of her belly. Um, so I kept taking her back to the all the day, saying something's up, and he was like, she's constipated. You know, it's just the end of end of the treatments. You know, stuff. And I said, no, something's up with her. So we took her in. She got a uh, ultrasound, and like they pulled us into the room, saying she's got a tumor. We're like, well, now she got a tumor. We brought her in three times to see you. Do you know what I mean? Um, so that was just so that. This is on top of the leukemia. Yeah, yeah, this is three months after. So she finished. She finished the treatment for two and a half years or two years. Three months later, she got a, a tumor, and it's a complete different cancer. Do you know what I mean? So like, she's how old she now? She's she's six at the time. So she's gone from having leukemia at three, finishing all this treatments, and then getting this again. Um, but you could see it, like you could feel it, like I, I was telling them, like something's up, and it was the same when we took her in for leukemia. They were saying, oh, she's got a, she's got a viral bug and took her into the walk in a couple of times and they're telling me nothing's up with her. I'm saying she can't even walk, like she's pale, she's, she's not eating, like something's up with her. So I felt like I was just repeating myself again, like deja vu, like how many times have you got to bring your kid in when you know they're not right? Um, and then obviously they'd done the test and was like, a, I think it was like 15 centimetres long, the tumour. It was like, how are you missing that? Um, so we took her in and I think they were going to do it, she, do something to like shrink it and all that and she was in we, we were in all the rain she was screaming in agony and I was like something's up with her and you go no no she's she's all right we're doing all this and it bled into like it the tumor like ruptured and bled you know what I mean so they had to take her down for an emergency surgery took her out um took her kidney out and stuff and then she went through all treatments again through radiotherapy and everything so she's just been for the past like five years you know what I mean like she's been through hell and you're dealing with you're dealing with stuff like this and then people are saying to you, get back into footy, like, the, the, the last thing I want to think about, yeah. going into footy. You know what, we've had people on me too, who struggled, mate, and it, I, I kind of understood the way, because I've, I've had me problems with gambling in the past as well. Um, footballers who come out and lose that, lose the purpose and turn to drink and gambling, which, like you say, you've just touched on a bit there, if that's not hard enough, and then you're dealing with that as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> Sorry, it's tough just to think about... Um, no, it's, 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 no, it's just it's, it, it was it's been a tough tough few years, you know what I mean? And things are looking good now. She's doing well. Um, she's in today, getting some tests done again. So she'll be in regularly, getting check check ups and stuff. Um, and you just you know you just pray to God like nothing's mm. nothing's thingy and nothing's hanging over her. But she's doing well. Like she started, she went to school last year. Like she you know she missed so much to school. Like she went back to school when she was seven. Like she's she's missed all that. Um, like struggle with other kids and stuff because she's never really been around them and and thinking what she's doing well. So um, yeah, she's a little fighter, it's strongest just, person I know. And I have no doubt about that. But you know, we spoke about this and it sort of feels now 
like we spoke about the pressure you have going to a club like Bayern Munich and all that, and it, it almost feels like insignificant, doesn't it? It's like yeah. because when you talk about pressure or you talk about mental fortitude or being strong, like that situation, mate, is mm. what whatever you've been through in footy. Yeah. It's not even fucking close to what you've been through as a dad. No. That's what I mean. All those things that were said about like the drinking and gambling. Sometimes that can be someone's main focus of the story and as bad and horrendous it was, it's like oh, I've went through that. But you fucking went through all that and then as we all know, we've all got kids. As soon yeah. as anything happens to one it's like yeah. that is the thing, isn't it? You yeah, know what that, mean? that's your main priority. Like but like I, I I dealt with things wrong, but I was always there, like never once missed an hospital appointment, but then there'd be times where you're struggling, you'd be like as I said, like I'll turn to like if I had a bad day, I'd be like, I'd be on my phone having a having a bet or like just to take my mind off things. And it's like, again, I didn't didn't get the help I needed, the professional help at the time. Like the hospital, say we can see counsellors and all that, but they don't really put it on yet to to speak to them. So I maybe I should have went. Yeah, I need to speak to someone because as I said, the only person I spoke to was my bed. Like, and 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 I didn't really speak to her. I kept things quite quite off off it but like you know when you're in bed and you that's the worst part like when your head's working overtime and mm. you're thinking like I don't even know like trying to think about it yeah, I just, found with my struggles mate as well when I like mine was like just loads of like knock on effects and it's it's when you are like lying there in bed and literally your fucking world's falling apart and it's that's impacting that impacting that impacting that it does feel like there's fucking no way out, doesn't it? Yeah. You're just not getting a break from whether it's financial, whether it's relationships, whether it's someone being sick, whatever it may be. It's just fucking overpowering, isn't it? Yeah, it's never ending. And as you said, like you, you've got other. I I had kids as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I'm trying to be be a dad to them, also be a dad to my sick kid. Um, and you just feel like you can't. You know, you're trying to keep a put a brave face on for them, and you're doing, and then you're lying in bed like sitting there thinking like what what's going to happen here is she mm. going to be all right like if this happens to her and you your head's working overtime and you're like you're not sleeping you're getting up knackered taking all these tablets what the doctor's giving you that aren't doing nothing do you know what i mean it's just like mm. as i said it was just a never-ending circle and she's come out the other end strong and she's doing well and we're, we're all looking good to be fair um but the, as i said like she, she's just from for what she's been through as a kid like you see, you see a body and everything, and you're just like, why, why, you know, why is that happening to her? Yeah. Like, why is it happening to any kid at that age? Yeah. And you go in, you get close to families, and uh, some of the stuff, some of the shit you see in there, it's just, just mad. Mm. We got asked the question, mate, on the on the, on the Patreon thing. Um, someone said, you know, do you, do you, do you religious? Do you believe in God? And I just remember me, my mum passed away when I was a kid, and, and my dad said, he went, if I ever see God, I'm gonna fucking knock him out yeah. when I see him. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That was when my faith fucking stopped there, yeah. and then. And, Mate, we've had uh, we've had fellas on there um, like oh, oh um, Mark McBay and stuff, and we mate, what you what you and your missus have went through, mate. Uh, fucking how strong you are, mate. Again, who gives a fuck about football? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I think that's the overriding message in it, and I hope that you know I fucking hope someone who watches it who's ever give you shit as well. You can just be like, fucking feels a cunt, because yeah. it's like. It's it, you summed it up before. You said people said to you, "Oh, you're getting back into footy," and your thought is. Why are you talking to me about getting mm. back into footy? Yeah. Do you know I mean it, it? It means nothing yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. But I get, and I guess what I can't get away from is how much you've been through in your life, both personally and as a family. But you're still, mm. you know, you're 28, 29. Yeah. Like you, all that was in your twenties. Do you know what I mean? It's hard to to really. I don't know. How, how, how did you know, Dale, on the on the kind of the drinking and the gambling stuff? I mean, how did you kind of like? you still might struggle now but how did you kind of get to the other side where you kind of like right I can talk about it now I'm doing alright and stuff things are picking up at me and was there a change was there something or what yeah I just think like she, we sat down and she's like I went, I went like I was drinking every single night you know what I mean it was just more drinking that I'd like to be doing like we all like to drink on the weekend or occasion occasions or whatever but I felt like when times were getting tough like I'd drink and then I'd do stupid stuff because my head was working overtime and the gambling side of it because he had a, a, a lot of money when I was at the time um, I just thought, you know, I'll go, I'll go and do that. And think as it start, as the money started slowing down and I was working a normal job, getting a normal wage, that's when the gambling sort of, because I couldn't gamble no more, mm-hmm. so to, I sort of stopped with that. Um, but that was just petty, you know, going to bookies when I was walking past it. And mm-hmm. I'd be like, I've been in there two hours, like I've been in here two hours, you know. Mm-hmm. And then a few of my mates were the same, like we were sort of in like a little circle, bouncing off each other, thought it was funny when we were losing and all that. And then, you're sitting there thinking, I've got kids here and I've got kids to support and I'm, I'm blowing that type of money. 
Um, but again, it's just things go on in your life and you're like, they're like little escapes for you to so yeah. just go and do it. And 100%. It's hard, yeah. isn't it? Because it does get, you know, we spoke about loads of things in here from alcohol to gambling and stuff, but sometimes it gets demonised, doesn't it? But sometimes, like, I don't know want to say you need it, but you sort of, there's got to be somewhere you can go just to get outside of your own mind for just, mm. you know, whether it be an hour, two hours or whatever. But yeah. I guess the problem comes when that starts to, you know, go from two hours to, to 12 hours or, to, you know, to 24 hours in yeah, some cases. Yeah. But how much did, have you grown up since, you know, we've gone over this multiple times about, you know, getting involved in stupid stuff, but since your daughter's gone through what she's gone through, have you sort of just matured completely as a person? Yeah, I've, you know, that, I think that has, like, sort of... I think as a family, as a, as a dad, I've sort of, I, you know, I've put all them, them sides. Like, I, I don't speak to certain people, do you know what I mean? i put my family first. Mm. Um, and just, I feel like we've come out the other side stronger. Like, you, you've been through something that you'd probably, you'd never go through anything worse in your life. So we got tested um, and we came out we came out strong. I think we had lockdown and everything, and that was tough. She got sick at the start of the lockdown as well. That's when it was. So we saw that uh, couldn't even too like people couldn't go in and visit her, and you know what I mean. Like he's trying to work as well, and you're missing work because you're in hospital, and they don't understand that like, you've got a sick kid, and you you know she's being kept in overnight because she's got a temperature, and that's why I decided to go and, and do my own thing with my culture and stuff, and probably the best decision I've ever made um, going into that. Um, so I think yeah, the, the maturity side of it. As I said, I'm 30 this year now, so you need to start growing up a little bit instead mm. of acting like that, thinking I'm still still only 21. I think, as you said, like people people think I'm older than what I am. Yeah. Someone a manager rang me a few years ago and said, oh, I think it was like 24 at the time. He said, how old are you now? 28. And I was like, no, 24. Like he was like, fucking, hell, you've been in the game. Seeing like you've been in the game for years because yeah. you started so young. But yeah, I feel like we're doing all right now. I'm never going to moan about lockdown again, lad. <laughs> like, I've fucking passed two years. Obviously, moving, like, you know, it's great news that she's sort of hopefully, you know, pushing towards, like, a positive yeah. next couple of years, which is unbelievable to hear. But for you, obviously, your, your football uh, coaching one-on-one business, how did, did that come about from you needing to be flexible to be, for you, be there for your daughter? No, I was, I was working in a job that I just weren't enjoying, and I was like, what am I doing here? Like, just, you know... What, what did you end up doing? I was working in a truss um, factory, so we, like, building reef trusses. And I just thought it was a horrible job to be in. It was just full of, full of horrible people. Do you know what I mean? Um, I know like no, most people don't like working, but if you're working in a job you enjoy, you don't really mind it. Mm. Um, so I was working there for about ten months, and then a lad used to play for Liverpool with. He's got his own uh, coaching company over in the Whittle. So I was working there with him on a Sunday for about six weeks. And I thought, oh, you know what? Like I'm enjoying this. Kid, the kids are warming to me. I feel like I'm helping them loads and. So I decided, I just said, look, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to do it. Um, and set me up and just, just went with it, you know, like took, took, a, took a leap and went with it. And, uh, and I've been busy ever since, like, got loads of kids in, doing well. But I just love seeing c- kids come in and be happy playing footy, do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of people out there who want to, again, see you doing well and want to try and jeopardise it and stuff, but that, that's just on them. I just do my own thing and got got my own kids and doing well with them and all I want to do is help kids play footy and enjoy it. You know, you don't gotta to put too much pressure on the kids. Um and if they're enjoying coming to me to learn, then I'm I'm happy and I'm, I'm doing my job right. Mm. Are these just one on one sessions then that kids come and do, is it or yeah I do I do one to ones, two to ones, small groups of four. I don't have like I don't get twenty kids and do that. It's it's all quite small and intimate. Mm. Do you see did. yourself, sorry, do you see yourself in, like, not, not I guess not ability-wise, because you are a bit of a one-off or one of few, but, do you know, do you see that same kid sometimes coming into you who's just love fucking got hold of a ball and just, like, no care in the world, do you know what I mean? Just, yeah, yeah, just you, footy. you do see some kids coming in um, that just love it, do you know what I mean? Like, mm. they, some come in and do, like, double sessions and they're there for two hours with you and they just love playing footy, the, the training. I've got a few kids who are at academies and stuff and they're just playing every day and that's what it needs to be, I think. Over the past few years, you, you don't like you don't see kids playing out in the street oh, no more, and no. or like we used to have youth clubs and all that. Like when we were growing up, I don't see much of that now. I don't see kids out, out and about, and I know like with lockdown, like kids put weight on and stuff, and just kids need to be more active and get out there and, mm. and play. You you, you damn got to be the greatest player in the world. Like I get some kids in who just want to come and learn to play, and you haven't got to do mad stuff with them and. 
you know, think go oh, you're gonna be the next best thing. I I be honest with parents and they say what you think and I'll just say well, they're a little bit behind for their age or you know they're, they're probably the more advanced than the way they should be and stuff like that. It's like I'll be honest with people as you said before, you get too many people in football telling parents what they want to hear. That's not me. I'll be honest. Hmm. Um, but yeah, as I said, as long as kids are enjoying it, that's that's all I'm there for. There's never been a more important time, mate. Like when. You know, I'm a firm believer we're probably going to hit a mental health pandemic next. Yeah. You know, giving kids an outlet where they can go, you know, whether they are the best player in the team or they're not the best player in the team, they can go to you for an hour and be mm. like, right, you know, this Dale's like focusing on me and like giving them positive reinforcements. Well done, do you know what I mean? That was brilliant, you're improving. Yeah. I don't think there's I don't think there's a more important job at the minute than, you know, mm. you know, building kids' confidence up because yeah. I've seen it with my own kids who spent a, you know, my daughter started reception at the start of the pandemic and she obviously had to homeschool yeah. and her confidence got knocked massively. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's, there's thousands, if not millions mm. of kids who probably are going to be dealing with, you know, maybe not as much confidence as they once had. So yeah. it's a commendable job. Definitely. Yeah. I, I, that's what I do. Just give the kids loads of the praise and confidence and... You know, even if they don't do something right, they still like don't worry about it. You know, you're here to learn and stuff like that. Mm. Like that, that's the. I don't put too much pressure on no kids. Me, any anyone that comes in, they're there to learn, mm. and I'm there to help them do it. Where, where is it you do it from? If anyone is thinking about, I was doing it in Prescott, but I had a few issues down there with the pitches and stuff. So I've got it. I'm in goals in Netherton, yeah, um, for the next couple of weeks. So I still need to find a fixed location because most of most of my players are coming from the likes of Heighton Ways and mm. and stuff like that. So Netherton. It's a bit far for them to come, so I need to find a fixed location. But at the minute, I'm in goals mm. in Netherton. Anyone works at a facility? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. anyone, yeah. That's yeah. me, yeah. Put it out, yeah. Like, what, um, what is, like, are you, like, I know you're passionate about the kids now, but could you ever see yourself going into the coaching in the academies or, you know? I could do, yeah. I think the more I've got into it, as I said, I've been going now eight months. Um, I think in the next couple of years, I do I do want to look look at going into it. Um, mm. Still got a few things I want to do now, though. Um, but yeah, I, I would like to go into to going into the academies. Mm. I think with me with like players, and I can I, I can think and feel all this pressure and stuff. And mate, I think by you telling your personal story just as much as your professional, yeah, mm. you'd help so many players, mate. Yeah, definitely, I, definitely. I, I've I've done stuff in the academies. Don't get me wrong, it's gone down well, but I'm saying the kind of to the extreme, like bloody getting blown up in Afghanistan, yeah, where yeah. you can actually go. I was one of you. I couldn't do that. I'm just giving my story, but you can go look. My life was on this track, and then a few things have happened. And do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not, mate. I think you've got so much to offer, mate. The world of football, I think like, especially yeah. in, that, in that academy sort of you know, these people's center of excellence, didn't he? But people like the LFA and stuff, where kids in these places they don't ever hear honest stories. Like mm. when I was in it myself, I'd never hear one person come up to me and go, Do you know what? I was doing it, but it didn't quite work out, yeah. But I firmly believe them kids need to hear from people where it didn't quite work out so they can be like, you know, if you if you do get, you know, rejected or, you know, if you get an injury at 21, you can still build a fucking good life based on what you've learned, mm, yeah. you know what I mean? But I find in footy, it's always, you know, if you, do, if you make it, boss, you, you your picture will be on our wall there and we'll get you in every other week, but the yeah. rest of your 17 teammates, good luck, lads. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I think you speaking to people like that would definitely help. Yeah. I did get a, a, a message the other day from someone who works for Everton in the community to go in and speak to, to the girls in there. And it, got, it had to be moved the meeting because something happened. Um, so he's asking me to go in next week and speak to them just about like things that go on in footy, the afterlife of footy and stuff. So I think I will do more of that as well, mm. going in and speaking to young kids and, mm. and people in the game. I think, as you, as you said, like too, too many people heard the perfect story. Like, mm. it's, it's not like that. It's no. never going to be like that. So kids need to know like they will be setbacks and they will... Not everyone's gonna make it, mm. and I, as you said, Trent, Trent put a video out there, and he, I hope more does get done for for players because too many players go off the rails when when they don't get what they thought they were gonna get. Hopefully, mate, it'll give fans an insight as well. Like when you go, when you're yeah. slagging someone off in the crowd, and you don't know actually, you know, in a personal life, his daughter's sick or that's mm. happened. Or, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. We're all guilty of it, aren't we? We all love footy, mm. and we all get embroiled in this like. It's our world, yeah. you know. You what you do for ninety minutes impacts my week at work. Yeah. But sometimes you have to remember it's twenty two fucking human beings. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We've got got their own problems. Yeah, but like, yeah. and it's like the Prem, isn't it? Like he's got loads of money. That doesn't mean you can't be in debt. Doesn't mean you can't have a gambling yeah, yeah, problem. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't have a drug problem. Doesn't but, mean your family can't get sick because yeah. you're on two hundred grand a week. As soon as you cross over that line and there's a sky camera or there's you know any sort of camera, it's almost like you can't be affected by the same problems I am. Mm. Like, I'm paying 50 quid, you know, be perfect yeah. for yeah. me. 
I think that's, that's one of the people that entitled to their opinions, but when it gets deep and personal, like, as you said before, then I went to his shit him, but, uh, you know, he's not shit, obviously, because he, he's, he's playing in the Premo, like, you'll mm-hmm. sit there and go, oh, he's poor there, but, yeah, and that's just your opinion, you might say to your mate or someone, but just going out of your way to write abuse to people and yeah. and be personal and deep, that that's just next level, you yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then you wouldn't it. say it to your face, that that's what gets yeah. me, and I've had some mad, mad shit sent to me, but... I'm the type of person that bites as well. Mm. Like, I won't just leave it. Like, I'm just, you know what I mean? I go over, like, who you're talking to type thing, like, mm. wanting to meet people and all that. And you, you can't do that. No. Um, but that's just the way, that's just me. That's why I've been brought up. I've always been like that. So, mm. we had that conversation, was it with you or someone I had with the other day about folding? You know, with the people were antagonising at the game or whatever. Yeah, and the then, boxing it was, wasn't it? The boxing yeah. or whatever, yeah. And then, but I say, if, if he would have put, like, if someone did that to my mum, I would have fucking gone mad. But if he'd have punched somebody, that's the headline, the, isn't the it? The papers would have been like folding, folding off the rails or yeah. can't play for England mm-hmm. now because he's a lunatic or yeah. something like that. Do you know what I mean? But it's like, they, they just wait. I think, and you probably suffered with some of this, I think most people want footy players to fail. Mm fundamentally yeah. so they can they can say oh, there's a, he, he, he was good him he should have made it but he, he didn't because he, yeah. he was a barn pot you know what I mean yeah, I think yeah. most people secretly whether they say it or not probably mm. want that yeah to they happen. definitely do the competition like even for places like you're playing now like pe- you're constantly in competition with someone so you're doing well they're, other people aren't happy about it mm-hmm. or you're scoring or you know you're running a game like and people are going oh what a game you've had there you get lads thinking you know, I've seen it myself I've seen it first hand it's just, that's just how it is but mm. bit of a shame really because if I see someone doing well I'm made up for them but it, it, some players are different I think it's people who've been through adversity though like can, yeah. can look like that you know yeah, and go yeah. oh, I'm made up they're doing alright you know yeah I think that's when you've been through stuff yourself and you can go, fucking hell, I'm made up. I think it's when you realise fucking life's bigger than footy as well, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, you're still playing now, but are we, uh, what's your outlook now on footy? Like, would you play Prescott Cables now? Yeah, I play for Prescott Cables on a Saturday and a Kenny Fields on a Sunday. Um, I enjoy playing, I love I love my Sunday footy. I love playing Sundays. But as a boss, it's competitive, the standard's good as well. You're and still s- ripping it up as well, are you? Know? I was at the start of the season, was doing well, and then I had a little niggle and then sort of being being thingy but I haven't played for a few weeks so uh, I'll play next week um, but yeah like Saturday footy is good as well because uh, you know a few, few of my mates and um, it's good but when you're not you know when you're not fit like you can sort not, not sort of like you can get away with it on a Sunday but you're getting paid on a Saturday to play so you sort of you've got to you've got to run yourself into the ground do you know what I mean like on a, on a Sunday you've got to work hard for, for the lads and you know your mates and all that but you can have little breeders and if you're doing that in front of 500 fans, they're all on your case type thing. Mm. So I think once I'm fit and all that and I'm back playing, I will start enjoying my footy more. But as I said, if you're running around blowing, blowing out your arse, mm. you're sort of yeah. thinking, no, I need a few weeks here to get myself back. But again, that's just the same circle I've been in for the past couple of years. Like I need to, to commit myself to it. Because once I do commit myself to it, mm. I'll push on then. I know I will, but it's just loads of things going on still. You still have things going on in your life that you sort of like... You no know, struggling, but that shouldn't be no excuse for not being fit, really. Mate, one thing we got asked to ask you: Who's the best player you've ever played? With, come up against the plate, whether it's playing with them in training or yeah, because we had obviously you've been named as people that you've been the yeah. best player that people yeah, have come yeah. up against. So who would you say yours has been? Um, local, any could be anything. Um, I'm, I, I always say this: Philip Lama. I just I just think he's too good not to mention. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's a decent stand yeah. for me. <laughs> like when, when I done the, the, the thing he did today, like I kept it local with a few local lads that I played, but um, he was just too good. So um, he's just like a little magician, do you know what I mean? And he was a right back and then moved up, moved, moved up to centre mid when, he, when he, his legs started going a little bit. But he was just like, you know, you'd watch him and you'd just admire him. You'd be like, but he, do, he gets overlooked again because, as you say, like people always go to me, Robin Ribbery and and plays like that but for me just being a football person watching him like he was just he was next level mm. it's a fucking cool story that yeah. <laughs> it's a good name good name to drop in yeah, there yeah. people throw like little names in there he was boss him like, Philip Lamb yeah, yeah. to be honest you're right he does, probably does get overlooked because once he retired people stop talking about him but yeah. you remember when he went from right back as you say right back to centre mm. mid and you're like fuck now he's now the best fucking yeah. defensive mid in the world Mad. <laughs> but he was that's how good he was like he just and you'd see him on a day to day basis you know what I mean it went like so you just see him, but not only that as a person as well, but he was like with the young lads, like obviously Captain capt Bayern, Captain Germany, like he was just he was just a leader as well. Mm. Um, and the young kids coming through, he'd throw their arm around them and look after them. 
proper player. Just with your attitude as well. Did you ever get like awestruck coming up against these players? Because obviously you've always seemed to be in this like kind of super talent. But did you ever come against someone who was just like fucking hell, like or? You knew you were gonna play. Did you ever get that awestruck and thinking, oh, "Canelo, I'd need to need to swap shirts with him at the end"? Was there ever someone who you really looked up to like that? No, that's that's one thing for me. Like I've never been like starstruck by a person. Like if I see someone, like I'll just be like, "Doesn't phase me." I'm mm. a bit weird like that. You know, some people would see someone and go, "Oh, there's such and such," and I'm just like, you know, we play we play Barcelona. They came over. I don't know what was going on, and the likes of like Puyol and Xavi and all that were in our thingies and I was just walking past them just like you know what I mean it was just it was mad like and I was just like yeah like whatever because mm. someday I thought I'm going to be like that type thing you know what I mean mm. he's just a normal person any mm. I, I, you know one day I hope to be as good as them mm. type thing so I mean you've had a your footy career is fascinating but I think you're like career after dinner speaking as well that's <laughs> yeah. that's that I know I couldn't tell you were nervous like if you said at the start that you're uh, yeah you're, like, that was a bit, that was a bit thingy yeah but, but uh, once you start tell. going it just, just flows don't it yeah and, be... anything else you want to finish on on it no no just I appreciate you getting me on and thanks for taking the time to do it perfect Hey, I think you're a role model to many mate what you've been through mate and uh, continue to mate and just wish yeah. you all the luck for the world nice mate nice one thank you cheers Dale nice one